led by myself, Mr. James Sykes. I've been one of the most successful uranium explorers of all time in the Athabasca. Welcome to the NEI 500 CEO interview program, where the senior management from select listed companies will share their insights with the audience about their company's growth potential. In this episode, we had the opportunity to sit down with James Sykes, the CEO of Baseload Energy, TSX Venture listed company with a trading symbol of FIND. Baseload is a uranium exploration company focused on Athabasca Basin in Saskatchewan, Canada. A few highlights a leader should know before watching the interview. Now is the time to invest in the uranium market. Uranium companies can follow the uptrend of an increasing uranium swap price. Baseload has a strong team with successful track record. The properties have the potential to provide multiple discoveries in the prolific region of Baskin Basin. The company has also a tight share structure with only 45 million shares outstanding. If you enjoy our video, please like, comment and subscribe to our channel so you can stay alert of our future content. Thank you for joining in for today's program. So we are very lucky here today to have the CEO of Baseload Energy, the up and coming uranium exploration company to come out and uh, speak to me today. The CEO is James Sykes. So how are you doing James today? I'm doing awesome. Thank you very much for asking yourself. Uh, yeah, we're all staying safe here. So uh, let's start with just you by giving us a bit of an overview about your company. For sure. So the company was formed earlier this year and we went public on the TSXV in June 2020. So that was basically less than six months ago. Uh, we are exploring for uranium in the world's most prolific uranium jurisdiction, which is the Athabasca Basin area. That's elephant country for high grade uranium. What we're doing though is we're employing new ideas and concepts for exploration. We're looking for basement hosted, open pitable high grade uranium ore bodies outside of the traditional Athabasca Basin which we know there, there are problems with some of those deposits. We feel that if our approach proves to be successful, we'll be able to increase shareholder wealth with the discovery, but also having a discovery that can go into production in less than 10 years. This is a, quite a big benefit to baseload energy. Uh, because we're new, we also benefit from having a low amount of shares outstanding, about 45 million shares uh, fully outstanding, which provides a lot of in incentive to investors for blue sky potential for share price appreciation if we are successful and make a discovery. Right now we've got about a $16 million market cap. Our share price is currently floating around 40 cents a share. So we're doing quite well and we're being very active. We're fully funded for going into this winter's exploration program. Thank you, James. So let's uh, uh, go on to the next one and asking you about why uranium, so most of the audience, is why uh, select to invest in the uranium sector and why now? Yeah, obviously uranium is the best of the best. If you guys want, if you guys want energy, uh, sustainable energy and baseload energy, uranium, nuclear power, that's the way to go. So uranium has already broken out from a 10 year low. We're starting to see the price increase now. It's up 30% on the year already. The fundamental, fundamentals that exist now are the same as what was observed back between 2003 and 2006, where we saw the uranium spot price move from less than $10 a pound to over $100 a pound. Uh, it's, it's a tenfold increase. Uh, some of those companies, some of those exploration development companies, they yielded over a thousand time returns for investors. Investors made millions off that run. So however, the fundamentals are even better now today than they were 15 to 20 years ago. So back, you know, back 2003, 2006, Canada, US, Africa, Australia, Kazakhstan, they were all producing uranium. But today, none of those countries are producing. And if they are, they've curtailed productions to very small amounts. So the market is showing signs that nuclear utilities are talking with, with uranium suppliers, such as Cameco, signaling that the use spot price is ready to climb upwards. Basically, uranium is ready to break out and explode. So a famous quote from the word has been talking about location, location, location. The same can be said for mining too. So we talk about the, the region that you are in, in Athabasca Basin. 
So in your materials, you always mentioned about 2.0, but Avabasket 2.0, maybe you can explain a bit about what you're referring to. Well, first, let's look at the basin itself. Uh, the Athabasca is the premier uranium jurisdiction in the world. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's elephant country for high-grade uranium. Deposits such as Cameco, as MacArthur River, and Cigar Lake have the richest ores of any commodity in the world. There's nothing that can come close to those values. However, those two mines, which are unconformity hosted, that's the Athabasca 1.0 model, they've also brought a lot of expensive, expensive technical challenges or that have led to both mines flooding twice. And they also require expensive engineering solutions to ensure that they don't flood again. So Cigar Lake was discovered in 1976. It took almost 30 to 40 years to go into production. Why? Because of the overlying sandstone that we see there. It's, it's a flowing aquifer, so there's a lot of fluids that come down towards the deposits along the structures. So it's a nightmare. Uh, it's a nightmare geoengineering problem to work with. Unless you're mining in the basement rocks or an open pit scenario, then you need to discover a monster deposit, something like a cigar lake, something like a MacArthur River, which are large tonnage and high grades. And those are very rare to find. So what we've done is we've taken this knowledge and applied it to our thesis moving forward. This is the Athabasca 2.0. We don't want the sandstone. We want to discover a uranium deposit hosted in the basement rocks which don't have the technical challenges uh, as the unconformity deposits do. In the last 10 years, there have been more than 500 million pounds of uranium that has been discovered as basement hosted deposits, so we know they exist. Most notably, Next Gen's Aero deposit that I led the discovery for. And we want to be far enough away from the basin margin that we can find an open pitable deposit. So then, you can find, an, you can find a basement hosted deposit, but still have to go underneath the underneath the Athabasca sandstones. If you're outside of the basin, you don't have those sandstone as, sandstones to deal with, and it could be open pitable. A, a discovery with these factors will reward shareholders in many, many ways. This is the Athabasca 2.0 strategy. Interesting indeed. So I know that you also have two main properties that you're gonna be working on. So maybe you can tell us a bit about your, your plans for these two properties. The game plan obviously is to advance both properties uh, very aggressively. I, I, I love the shadow property. That's probably one of the, the best properties I've ever laid my eyes on. There's just something so magical about it. It gets me excited. Uh, there's so many possibilities for making an Athabasca 2.0 discovery out there. The, the thing about shadow too though is that it's never been explored ever. It's completely untouched. This is completely virgin ground. This is, uh, this is outside the box thinking. Nobody's ever looked at this area for having any potential at all. But because of my success in the past, uh, I do see a lot of potential out there. So I'm actually working on a couple videos to put on, uh, to put on our website and to distribute amongst the press that will highlight uh, the, the benefits of, or I guess the structural elements that I see occurring at Shadow. So recently we completed an airborne MP survey in August over Shadow. The results are amazing. A lot of great structures. And that's what you need for uranium deposits, you need structures. In December, we're planning to start a ground gravity survey over three priority target areas where we'll be able to identify any areas of clay alteration, which is what you need for uranium deposits. Clay alterations are the halos around these deposits, and it's basically easier to search for those than uranium mineralization itself. And then in Q1 2021, we're eagerly, eagerly anticipating our maiden drill program on the property and for the company. Again, the company being only formed in June, we've never completed a drill program yet, we've never started a drill program. So we're planning for about 5,000 meter drill program, which is a very healthy start. And then by the time we get to Q2, Q3 of 2021, we want to continue exploration on shadow with more ground gravity over the target areas, boots on the ground prospecting, and obviously more diamond drilling, because that's how we will make a discovery. For our other property, the Hook Lake property, we'll start field exploration also in Q2, Q3 of 2021. We have to complete a historic assessment of the area first. There is, you know, there's been considerable work done in the area before exactly before we figure out exactly uh, what we want to do on the property. But we'll be more than likely cover the property with modern geophysics, ground gravity surveying, prospecting. As we know, there are radioactive boulders with up to 1% U308 on the property and there are also radioactive swamps. 
And then we'll also do follow-up with diamond drilling, of course. So I can't really predict beyond, beyond Q3 of 2021 uh, what we'll do since we are a startup company and we just want to get that ball rolling. But we are looking for more properties that fit our criteria for excess. So depending on what we acquire, uh, we might just, you know, we will have more work on other properties to do as well. Well, it seems like a lot of excitement, uh, a lot of uh, interesting activities coming up. Um, absolutely. You. Oh, absolutely. Keeps us going. Yeah. So uh, maybe you can uh, tell us a bit about your, so you want some highlights about your team, you know, who's uh, standout people in your team that you'd like to talk about uh, for attracting investors' attention. So the company is helmed by my felt, myself uh, as the CEO and the president. So I'm the technical expert behind all the exploration. I've had a very successful 15 year career so far with at least 550 million pounds of worth of U308 discoveries to my name. That's direct and indirect discoveries. As mentioned previously, I was the lead geologist that led to NextGen's air discovery, which is over 350 million pounds U308, all basin hosted uranium. My discoveries have helped generate more than $1 billion in shareholder appreciation. That's working with Hathor, NextGen, and Denison Mines. So my colleague, Mr. Cameron McKay, he's our project manager. He has over five years of Athabasca uranium exploration and success with PurePoint. Uh, he's where he spent his entire career working on the Spitfire and other PurePoint deposits. So we've also got Mr. Charles Beaudry on the board, who is a veteran in the exploration world. And he actually worked on the Hook area back in the 1970s. So he's very familiar with uranium. Complementing our technical team, is our financial group led by Mr. Stephen Stewart. He is the brainchild behind the whole company. Uh, Stephen was the one who started the company. He had the foresight to get into the uranium market before the industry turned for the better. And then he sought me out to helm the company. Uh, Stephen's got over 15 years of financial and chief executive roles with pu publicly traded mining and exploration companies. He's had a very successful career so far, generating a lot of return for shareholders as, as well. So basically, Baseload is a part of Stevens or Finder group of companies. And you know, when you look at the, the share structure of, of our property, of our, of our company, 5% uh, of 5% of our management, well, the insiders and management own, uh, own our company. The other 45% is owned by another Steven led group called QC Copper and Gold. So we're very high, very tightly held uh, within the company. Got it. So maybe in summary, James, uh, you'd like to tell us uh, why investors should consider investing in base loans. Because now is the time to invest in the uranium market. It's poised to break out. It will. The spot price will continue going. As spot price continues to grow, then you will see you'll see all of these uranium companies go move up with the spot price. It happened back then. It'll happen again. Uh, they always follow the upward trend of an increasing spot price. There's no doubt about it. So, and like I said, this market's just ready to skyrocket. So then you need to decide, you know, if all of the companies are equal, what is the right company for you? I think Baseload stands out amongst all of our peers simply because we've got the best technical team who have a lot of success stories. And we're hungry to repeat that success. We've got the right properties that look very favorable for discoveries and our thesis for exploration is one that makes a lot of sense. It's one that will provide multiple opportunities for shareholders to benefit from. Mm -hmm. Not just from a discovery or multiple discoveries, as, as I really like to hope, but also by having the opportunity to, to have a discovery that goes into production in less than 10 years. We don't want to wait around for 30 years or 40 years. We want to get that thing moving now. And best of all, we've got a very tightly held company. Not a lot of shares outstanding to begin with, and we're very, we have very liquid trading, so it shouldn't scare anybody away. If you value baseload and our peers at the same market cap, we would have the highest share price simply because we have the fewest amount of shares outstanding. So a discovery for us sees the potential have a 10 times return or even higher on an investment within four months or more. Great to hear. So James, thank you today for your time and sharing your insight with us about baseload and also of course about uranium exploration too. Thank you uh, for joining us today, James. Thank you very much, Gilbert. It's been a pleasure. If you enjoy our video, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel so you can stay alert of our future content.